Uh, hello everybody and this video we're going to uh, go through really basic uh, configuration that you can actually configure in your router at home or at work. So the first thing you need to know is the uh, router's IP address which is you know usually called the default gateway and you also need to know the, uh, the router's login information which is the password and the username. You know, in a lot of routers, by default, it is admin for username and password for password. Like no, in other cases, it actually changes. So if you don't know it, the best thing you can do is actually just go to Google and then try to find out the specific, info, you know, in specific login for that specific router. So since I already know my um, IP address and the login information, let's go to the internet, brow internet browser. And then let's type here the default gateway, which in my case is 192.168.1.1 for credentials. So as you can see here, my username is admin and the password. As I told you before, um, password is sometimes by default is password. And then in, in some other cases, it's blank or username is blank and the password is password. So if you don't know, it's just Google it. Uh, you know, it's not a good idea to leave it default because, you know, a lot of people know what the default password is and then uh, if they have access to your internet, you can actually change all the configuration of your router and you won't be able to access it. So let's click login. And when when we click login here, it should bring us to the uh, to the basic tab and the home menu. And then here we will we'll see the configuration we have. As you can see, the internet status is good, the wireless it's on and the SSID of the network is it Cruz Wilmer uh, it tells me how many devices are connected to my router there are two and it's telling me too that the uh, guest network is enabled that's telling me that I have two networks here and if we go to, if we go to the uh, available network tab here you can see there are two networks here I have Cruz Wilmer which is the one I'm connected to and I have Wilmer visitors so if you're concerned about security and you don't want to give people, you know, the password you're using, you can actually just create a really easy password to remember for this network here. Um, you know, it's, it's a good way to uh, to avoid people, you know, connecting to your network, the one you connect to. So let's see what we can see here. If you go to attach devices, um, it actually will give you here all the devices that are connected to your router, the IP address that they're using, and then and the uh, MAC address. As you can see here, this is the IP address that I'm using. This is my IP address of Cruz, which is my PC, and there is another device called here. This is the name, the MAC address, and the IP. You know, in some routers, it actually enable you to um, to configure MAC filtering. What this means is like you create a table and whatever MAC address you you put on that table, you know, wh whatever device has the MAC address will be able to connect to the network. You know, a lot of companies use it because it's the most secure, you know, um, thing that they can do. So, you know, this is a really good feature if you worry about security. I mean, my router doesn't have any that option here. I have not seen it. But, you know, if your router has it, just practice it and um, see what it can do. So all you need to do is just add the uh, the MAC address here to this table, and then whatever MAC address is here um, that can respond to that to a device, that device will be able to connect to to your to your router. So let's go to guest network, and the guest network you can see is the um, the guest network is enabled, the SSID is enabled, you know, enable SSID broadcast. What this means is like if you enable this people will be able to see it here. You can see here, uh, it's showing the cross woman. If you disable this, you won't be able to see anything. So if you worry about security, it's a good you know thing to use, you know, disable the um, SSID broadcast. So if you go to the internet, you know, if you can see my, my router is configured to get a, a dynamic IP from the internet service provider is a ISIP. You can see here, this is my uh, public IP. If you go to the internet tab, you can see here they uh, get dynamically from ISP, which is Comcast in this case. You know, the domain name services DNS, it actually 
get he actually is assigned automatically by Comcast. Um, let's go to the advanced tab and see what we can see over there. You know, in the advanced tab, it lets you, you know, if it's the first time you connect the router to your, um, you know, to your modem, you can actually go to this to the setup menu. Uh, you have here internet setup, everything you want here. Um, if you go to the wireless setup, you can see here you can enable the SSID broadcast, the name of the network, which is this. You can you, you can specify the channel. You know if you have um, problem with the channel you're using, you can actually change it here. In my case, it's automatic. You know you have the range from one to eleven, from one to eleven here to shoot. So I'm just gonna leave it automatic. Uh, you have the mode. You know my router is, is running up to 150 megabit per second. I'm gonna actually change that to 300. I actually tried it and uh, it didn't work because you say even though you're using you're trying to use 300 megabit per second it's not gonna work uh, also as you can see here I'm using the most secure encryption here WPA2 so this is uh, really good and then next, now let's go to the LAN setup in the LAN setup as you can see here I have the uh, TCP IP setup I actually I have the default gateway here, 192.168.1.1 and I have the subnet mask which is telling me that this is a class C IP and then um, use the routers as a DHCP server as you can see here this is telling me that the router is assigning IP to whatever computer connects to this router as you can see here I have a wrench which is mean you know that uh, I won't be able to use any IP under 20 so if I have a range here, that means, you know, uh, I would be able, if I connect a computer, it may get 192, that works 68, that 1, that 21, 25, 28, you know, any IP between 20 and 254 uh, will be assigned to a computer that connects to my, um, to my network because, you know, I have the range here. Um, also, if we go to um, let's go to the security tab. In the security tab, uh, you have the parental control, block site, block services, casual email. Let's go to the block sites. You know, uh, the block site you can do really nice things. You know, you can put here any website that you don't want. Let's say you work in an office and you don't want people to be using Facebook. You can actually block that um, that URL here. In this box and whatever is in this box you know will be blocked by the router firewall if we try to use face if we try to use Facebook here it would tell us you know that the uh, Facebook is actually blocked by the their router firewall so let's try it if you can see here I already have Facebook here uh, let's try to open Facebook so, one two uh, so www.facebook.com as you can see here, it's telling you that the, the site blocked by the uh, Netgear firewall. Um, you can also you can put here as many websites you want. You know, if you don't want anybody to to use Facebook, you can actually just put it in this box. There is also you know, and this is a specific router, and your router may change. There is a schedule tab here. You can actually specify the day that you want to block that, you know, site or service. So this is a really nice fixture here. And then you can actually apply the time zone. I actually have Pacific here. I need to change it to Eastern. So let's go to administration. You know, in administration, you can actually do uh, really nice. You can actually check really good information here. You can see, you can see the logs. This will give you a lot of information, you know, about devices that have been connected to your network. It will give you the dates. It will give you the um, the day that it was connected here, and it will also give you, you know what website you have used uh, and the attached devices. Do you have you know whatever device is connected to the router, which in my case only there are only two. You can see here I have the MAC address, the device name, 
and the IP address that the device is using. You know, and the set password. You can change the uh, current password if you want to change it. I'm not going to change it right now. I'll do it later. Firmware update. You know, if you if you know that there is um, an a you know an upgrade um, an update for your router, you can actually do it here. Let's go to the advanced setup. In the advanced setup, you have a lot of stuff. You know, you have the wireless settings. You have the wireless access point. Uh, let's go to the wireless setting uh, and see what settings we have in this router. So you can see here, I have um, all this configuration here. You know, turn off wireless signal by schedule. You actually, you can actually do that here. If you want to turn off your wireless, let's say from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., you can actually do it here. Turn off wireless and then add the pe then the you know the period of time that you want to have it off. I'm not going to turn it off because I use it all the time. And the wireless AP, this is stands for wireless access point. What this means is, you know, you can, let's say you have an office and then there is another office across the hall. Uh, you know, this, this router gives you a really good graphic here, which is telling you, you know, that this is the DSL, DSL cable, and this is the router here. You know, the, se the existing router, and you want to add another router so you can have an access point. Now, let's say you have an office and then there is another office across the hall that is not getting you know, enough signal and you want to put a router in that office, you can actually just connect it to the existing router you know, and then just put a router in the office so they can have a really good signal. And then something very important to know about this is that when you're connecting a router to another router, make sure you use crossover cable, I believe. Um, Another good thing here is that you have, let's go to the port forwarding and port triggering. You know, in the port forwarding, you can actually, um, you can actually forward, you know, any port, let's say you're trying to connect to your computer from the outside world, you know, you send packages to that router and whatever port is open in that router, you know, the router will know what computer you're trying to connect to. In my case, you know, I'm, uh, I have this service open here. You know, 3389 stands for, um, you know, this is the port you use to connect to a computer remotely. So when I try to, to you know, when I try to communicate with the router and I'm telling you, hey, I want to connect, connect to this port, um, so they can, the router already knows to forward me to this computer right here. Which is 192.168.1.104, which is the computer I'm using. But remember, when you try to do this, you always have to know the public IP address and the port name. You know, the public IP, my public IP, I will show it. I mean, I'm not going to show it, but I'm just going to show you what it is in this specific router. And this is the port that we use. So, this, that's a really good way if you are at Starbucks and you forgot to. You know, to bring a USB and you have a file in your computer that you need to print or email, you can actually just connect from Starbucks to your computer and then email it from there. And then here we have remote management. In remote management, you can actually open, you know, a port which is 8080. This will enable you to connect to your router remotely. You know, if you want to change some configuration from another office or you have problems in the router you're uh, trying to know what the problem is, you don't necessarily have to go to the office and then you know, touch the router physically, you can actually just access it remotely and see if everything is, is you know, as configured, as you have configured. So the way you access the router is you usually go to the um, internet browser and you type this address here, http column forward slash um, the router public IP and the port. You know, by default, the router gives me 8080, which you know is going to be HTTP. You know, if you want to, if, if you are concerned about security, you can use 443, which will give you, you know, more, which is a, which is a more secure protocol, you know, that is going to use secure shell. Uh, so that's something you can use if you are concerned about security. So this is the way you're going to access the router remotely. So you're going to find out what the IP, what the public IP is. You're going to put it in the uh, internet browser, click enter, and then just provide credentials. You'll be able to access it remotely. Uh, so that's 
pretty much what I have to explain here. Um, I hope you guys learned anything. Thank you.